And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first Penn State Field Hockey Zoom of the 2022 campaign. We're joined by head coach Shar Marek Curtis. Shar, thank you for uh, joining us on this Tuesday as we get ready for a big home weekend. No, I'm so excited to be here. Just uh, starting another uh, big time season and two great opponents coming to town. So we're ready to go. You have a veteran squad with a lot of players, with a lot of experience. How has the preseason camp been? Um, what's their energy level like? And you know what, what do you gauge as their goals? You know, their energy has been outstanding. Their resilience has been outstanding. The way they maintain their uh, unity as teammates, as friends, as student athletes is extremely impressive. I'm so proud of them. I would, people ask me at the end of preseason, like, are you exhausted? I'm like, Actually, I'm not exhausted because they didn't exhaust me. They just came ready every right. practice, every training period to really perform at their best, to be open to coaching. So just real excited um, about the group that we have coming back. We only really have two new freshmen joining the team this year, but there's still some tweaking that we have to do, you yeah. know, just to, you know, get them back in the swing of things as a team. Uh, talk a little bit about your three captains. Your team voted on them. Um, couldn't have picked three. You could have picked a number of athletes yeah. and the three they chose are as deserving as anyone else they could have picked. So talk about the three of them. Yeah. So what we do, we put, we give them a leadership uh, sheet and it really talks about who, who are players on team that you feel comfortable going to on and off the field. Who do you think really exemplifies our core values as a team teammate? Um, you know, who are players that really create that, that glue and that unity for the team and, while there are a lot of different names that are continually mentioned through these different questions that we asked, then comes the question of who do you think, you know, who would you vote for captain? And they each nominate two teammates and the reasons why. And it, you know, very close votes. And we had uh, Megan Reese, who's returning captain, Elena Voss and Mackenzie Alessi that, that were voted. As I announced the captains later on that day in a team meeting, the one thing I always emphasize to this team is that we have a lot of fifth-year players. We have a lot of seniors. And they're, they, are, they are players that I rely on because they know me. They've been with me for four and five years. So I, yep. they know the type of program we're running. Um, they've learned from previous leaders. I have two outstanding assistant coaches who played for me who are great mentors to them as well. So I really rely on not just the three captains, but on the experience of this team to help us be the best we can be, to help us, you know, hold each other accountable and uh, set the standards of practice every day. So, but like you said, Pat, uh, just three outstanding players and people. You know, you have so many returning players who, who helmed the bulk of your minutes last year. But like you said, you know, there's things you got to tweak without giving away <laughs> trade secrets. What, are there some different things you maybe expect to show fans this year with this squad, given there's going to be so many familiar faces? What can we expect to see that might be different? Well, we're really putting a high emphasis on the possession piece and moving the ball around the field. We're a team that really likes to, you know, transition quickly, which we still want to keep, you know, that that type of uh, strategy. But at the same time, we want to recognize when something is shut down, we've got to learn to go in a different direction where I right. think in the past we were able to just like keep forging ahead. And I think this year we just we're hoping that experience will translate into more composure on the field. Um but yeah, I think trying to get everybody into an attacking mode when we have the ball and everybody into a, you know, disciplined defending mode when we don't have the ball. You had a number of players um, who, you know, with the U.S. national team and, and various U teams and so on and so forth. That's a lot of action in what is considered to be a time where you're supposed to let your body kind of recuperate. How do you feel the energy level of kind of those specific players is? Do they seem like they're fresh and ready to go? Yeah, they, they spent about two weeks in Virginia Beach at a high intensity tournament, but I feel like their training prepared them for that. And then they were smart enough to, you know, get their recovery time in and then yeah. ramp back up for the demands of a preseason. You know, we've been really fortunate here. We have a um, we have two people, um, Jared Jarvey and uh, Mark Lewis, who Mark is our new sports scientist, and right. he has done an outstanding job working with us the day that he got here last spring and then throughout the summer with developing a training summer training program. And now that we've come into the uh, preseason, really looking at 
how we can push these girls and how we need to back off their training. So I feel with their guidance, um, you know, Mark being a sports scientist for the Olympic sports here at Penn State has been extremely valuable. Yeah. You know, let's talk about the season ahead. There are any number of teams and you can go, if you look at the teams in the preseason ranking, you can go 15 deep of teams that could look at their season ahead and go, we are, we're going to win it. We are going to win it. And you're one of those, no doubt. But we, as we hone in on the Big Ten, oh my gosh, again, um, yeah. to, you know, talk about the strength of this conference and actually how exciting that is for you as a coach and for you as a recruiter to go out and to be able to tell the youngest, best players in the country, come to Penn State, you have yeah. the best atmosphere and the best conference. Talk a little bit about our conference. Yeah. Well, I, I think the the, Penn, the uh, Big Ten really took a huge step last season with the six teams going into the NCAA tournament. And that was, you know, the most, I think, of any uh, conference in, in history. And I think they all battled. And yep. the top four, unfortunately, didn't move on to the final four, but the other two that were selected did. And you had Northwestern winning it all. So you were extremely proud of our conference. And what they do is challenge us, you know, on a day-to-day -day level. They challenge us in the off-season and in-season. So, you know, putting together a weekend like we did we do every year playing in Virginia playing top teams that first weekend opening weekend it just gives a meaning to it gives a purpose to your preseason but we know that every team in the Big Ten top to bottom you know yeah. Indiana Ohio State that it's never ever an easy game and so we just really have to focus on our goals for this week and hope we can attain them over the weekend and then reset what what's what's the next step we want to take to be a better team come the following weekend and so forth that really worked for us well last year we don't get overwhelmed with uh who we're playing three weeks from now the conference so much but right how we need to focus on our game this week let's let's discuss the opening weekend um, this is going to be two battles and fans of field hockey get a bonus third game so we will open up with number 12, Virginia, Friday at 5 p.m. Talk a little bit about the Cavaliers. We play them every year early in the season, and it's always a war. Yep. Yeah, I'm very close to Michelle Madison there, head coach. She and I go way back from when we helped the 96 Olympic team. We were assistant coaches back then and uh, just have had a very special you know, friendship coaching-wise and, uh, you know, off the field. She always has her team prepared. Uh, last year, it was an overtime win. So we really expect this is going to be another battle for 60 minutes and, and see where it goes after that. But they're just, they keep their structure. They've got a lot of fast forwards. They've got some midfields that can really attack. So I feel like, again, it's going to be a big time battle and, and that's what you want. Yep. And then shortly after we play Virginia, Louisville, our Sunday opponent, will play Bucknell. So fans remember at 7.30, right after we get done battling the Cavaliers, Louisville and Bucknell will go at it at the field hockey complex field. It's going to be a great game, uh, a local squad and Louisville. And now let's talk about Louisville, who we will play Sunday at noon. Talk about the Cardinals. Right. Louisville has really uh, come on strong the last four or five years. They've won the ACC um regular season standings and again they're very very well coached they they've got great support down there in louisville and she's just done an outstanding job poaching some of our kids from uh pennsylvania which we're not happy about but you know they're just competing in a tough conference the way we are and last time we played them was right before covid hit i think it was that 19 2019 season and happy that we can finally get them to come back up here and uh into pennsylvania and Again, another battle. They will just be very, very strong defensively. Um, that's really they, – they, they're a team that really takes a lot of pride in how they play defense. Outstanding. Well, we – you know, that, that kind of gets us into this first weekend, and it's going to be an exciting one. And then that's it for a while for home games. And why is that? Well, we're enhancing the field hockey complex. So I want to close you out before we bring in our special guest. I want to close you out with – how exciting is it to finally see groundbreaking, to see some trees coming down that are going to be in the area of the new enhanced Penn State field hockey complex? Yeah, it was it was sad to see some of the trees go. Yep. Going to be sad when the bleachers go because they've been with me for decades. Uh, they've been very kind to me with the people that have been in the stands. They've been there all through 
different times of weather and uh, seeing a lot of great, great games. But I am uh, just ecstatic. I, you know, I really like to thank thank Tom Hess, you know, and Cindy, his wife, because they were the the first um, event that we had to really kick off this fundraising for the stadium, like trying to get more interest into the funding of the stadium and. You know, we went through a lot of challenges with this project. It started in 2010. I don't know if people realize it, 2010. Yep. And then we got, had a setback and then we had COVID. Then we had new administrations uh, come through. And it was uh, something that I never gave up on. I right. just had to keep plugging away. And the day that the board uh, approved the uh, the financing of the stadium at that board meeting in July, I, I actually was hyperventilating, crying because of happiness, crying because I missed hearing them. I got on just as they, oh. and, you know, my phone was blowing up. Um, so it was just exciting. I'm just so grateful for, you know, Tom and so many alums and donors that have really made this a dream come true for our program here. You know, it's really about all the players like Jill Marks that have played before, you know, and I think they've um, are excited about now having this venue that we can take a lot of pride in. And, uh, you know, it's been exciting. I walk to work every day. So the first day that I walked to work and saw the red and yellow flags in the ground, I was like, this is really happening. And then yep. when I saw them put the blue screen up in front of the stands, I'm like, this is really happening. And <laughs> every day I'm like, no, it's really happening. I, I have to like pinch myself and, uh, Again, so grateful to uh, Sandy and Lynn and, and so many people that have really, the board and they really helped. My assistants have been great, Laura and uh, LB through this whole time as well. Just so many people and uh, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be exciting to watch it. You know, I videotape a couple mornings and uh, the, the the guys out there working, they're excited too. That's, that's awesome. And you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's indicative of the stature of this program and the stature of this program's head coach. And it's about mm -hmm. time. And it's exciting. Yeah, it's about time. Um, and so for fans, yes, we don't have stands, but we still got that great vantage point from the bank. You know, bring your chairs, bring yep. your roar, and let's get ready to make this weekend a thrilling weekend uh, for what is a very talented Penn State field hockey team. Yeah, thanks. And at this time, I'd like to bring in our special guest. And let me go to here and see if we can bring her down on the pin. And we'd like to welcome uh, Jill Yisrael. Jill Martz, when she was a Penn State field hockey player here. Jill was a three-time All-American at Penn State, two-time first team. Jill, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. Oh, you're muted, Jill. You're muted. <laughs> That's okay. There you are. I wasn't well, sure if I was on before, so I had myself muted for <laughs> sure. But um, no, thank you so much for inviting me. It's always good to be back. Well, you know, it's a great idea that Coach Shar had where, you know, we have a player come in every week. And this week it will be Megan Reese, uh, one of our co-captains, a 50 year player for us because of a COVID year. She's number 11 and Char had this great idea. We need to get alumni who wore that uniform number to come back, chat with coach for a bit, hang on, chat with the player for a bit. So thank you for being our inaugural spe special guest. No problem. <laughs> well, Char, is there anything you'd like to say to Jill while you have here uh, face to face, as it were, yeah. uh, via our video cameras um, in terms of bringing her back to talk with Megan? You know, I'm so proud of Jill in so many ways. When we she came, first came to camp, uh, you know, in high school, we knew right away that she was someone that we wanted in our program. Just her tenacity on the field and her openness to coaching. And I think, you know, just the accolade that she was an All-American three years speaks volumes, first team twice. And she just is someone that was not just a, a great field hockey player, but a great leader on the team and a, an amazing competitor. And I remember, you know, asking her one summer, like, you know, how's your summer going? What'd you do? And she's like, well, I was in my barn batting rats. And I'm like, you're doing what? Uh, I like, I, you know, we have a farm and the rats get into the barn. I got to protect, you know, the, and so I, I have a baseball bat and I'm like, this girl is tough as nails. And, um, you know, just a uh, a wonderful teammate, always cared about her teammates, still cares about her teammates, loves Penn State field hockey, still loves Penn State field hockey. So to bring her back in this inaugural um, Zoom is very meaningful, I think, for all of us and especially for me as well. Jill, what are your, you know, I'm going to get, I don't want to get into the standard, you know, what's your best memory of Penn State field hockey? Some of those answers tend to, to blur together. But what is the one specific thing that you can think of 
on short order that you took from playing for Coach Shar and playing field hockey here that 10 years down the road, you went, oh my gosh, thank gosh, I remembered that from Penn State. What's that one trait, that one skill, that one personality aspect that you carried on from your time as a player? Well, I would say um, it would be from exactly what was able to accomplish the stadium and that's determination and perseverance. And the fact that, you know, Shar was working on this project for over a decade, over yeah. a decade speaks volumes. And that's something that she tried to instill in us. Um, and uh, I would say that character trait is something that gets you through anything, whether it's, you know, the challenges of life, you know, difficulties in your job or whatever, just having that determination and perseverance to push through. And uh, yeah, so that's what I would say. Well, tell us a little bit of what you're doing now. Let the fans know who are going to tune and watch this on GoPSU and through our social channels here later this evening. What are you doing right now? Tell us about Jill today. Well, I teach health and phys ed at Line Mountain School District. Um, so that's what I'm doing um, as far as professionally. I'm also working on my principal certification oh. uh, through Penn State. So I have I will have all my degrees through Penn State, my grad or undergrad, grad, and my principal cert. So that was important to me to have on my resume. Um, I have my family, my husband, and I have two, two little boys who are in first and third grade. So that is a role that I take very seriously, um, a wife and mom, and that's kind of the center of my world. Um, I don't get to coach as much as I would like to. That's kind of my passion is coaching. And uh, I really do miss that a lot, uh, especially being a head coach. That's something I just absolutely, uh, Again, it's my passion and it just feels so fulfilling to give back to what I got out of playing field hockey and playing sports and to be able to kind of give that to, that experience to um, younger players and student athletes. Um, but someday when my my little boys don't want to hang out with mom anymore, <laughs> then maybe I can get I can you know get back in the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you know, we want to bring Megan in here in a little bit, but I want to give you a chance to, you know, maybe say something to Shar. I know, I know our alumni base is so tight. Our former players, we're tight. We, we, you, you get back together, you stay in contact, maybe not as often as you'd like. And I know you all communicate with Shar directly, but here you are in front of friends and, and in front of fans who are going to see this. Is there something you'd like to pass on to Coach Shar right now before we let Shar go and bring Megan in? Just a big thank you. Um... I mean, I don't think there's words, you know, that I can say that will express, you know, how I feel other than thank you. But um, the older I get, and, you know, and the further removed that you are uh, from being, a, you know, an athlete, I think I just look back on my experience that I had and it just I just get such a greater appreciation for the people that I was able to work with. I mean, I just the great people like Shar recruited, that's what she looked for, great families. And I played with like such great teammates and just met so many great people and, you know, working under Shar and uh, LB and John O'Hare when he was there and Jill Reeve, um, just, I was surrounded by great people. And that is what helped me to achieve what I achieved um, and learn what I've learned and come out where, where I am now. So right. that's what I would say. So thank you, Shar. <laughs> Jilly, you were, you were, you were easy. <laughs> you were easy. <laughs> um, you know, what's fitting is that she wears Megan's number. Megan's wearing her number, I should say. And they both play with like such passion and such relentlessness. Like they never, ever, Jilly never gave up on a ball. Megan never gives up on the ball. They just take their offense and defensive responsibilities to heart and, they leave it on the field. They give 100% on the field all the time. So it's really fitting when, when you do watch Megan play. She's got those qualities that Jill once had too. And, uh, you know, with, with Jill, the, she was injured year after year, but it was really, um, you know, just because of her tenacity on the field, trying to get that ball, you know, get in front of a stick. Like, you know, one time she split her ear in Spain and it just, but she always came back. She always came back, broken nose, like always came back. She's ready to play the next day. Sorry, sorry, I always said I always said I was lucky. I had lucky injuries because every injury was to my face. Like, so I knocked my tooth out, my ear, you know, this, that broken nose. I was like, I still got to play. Like, I never had an injury. I couldn't like, <laughs> you know, so I was so lucky. True. 
Yeah, it looked <laughs> like she was in a boxing match. <laughs> but she nice. won. She still won. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. You know, this has been great. I'm looking forward to these as the year goes on. Shar, thank you so much. Yeah. Jill, stay put. We're going to bring Megan in. Will do. And uh, Shar, thank you so much. If you can go ahead yeah. and grab Megan and I will I pause will. our recording and we'll start uh, again in a little bit. All right. Great to see you, Ann Schnell. Okay. Welcome back. And we are joined by fifth year senior Megan Reese. Megan is a captain again this year. And Megan has played 70 games and has started 54 straight. At Penn State, and she's about to make it. Well, we'll get into the 80s. I know the 70s, I think, this year, which is great. Megan, thanks for joining us on an exciting first week of the season. Thanks for having me. Well, we're joined today by um, a the, a person who played here in Jill, the former Jill March, Jill Yisrael. She also wore number 11. And uh, we thought it would be exciting to have her come in and just, you know, say hello to you. Um, maybe give you some wisdom, talk about what it was like to wear number 11, if that is important. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. So Jill, I'll turn it over to you. Say hello to Megan. Hey, Megan, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. You got practice after this? Yeah, yeah, practice and video. All right, nice. Um, I saw that you just uh, earned a captain position. Yes, yeah. Congratulations, congratulations. So I guess that's probably what I would talk about. I was also a captain um, when uh, I was a senior. And uh, so, you know, just going into that, trying to stay positive and, you know, especially on the field, you know, taking charge when things uh, get rough, you get down a goal, you know, whatever it may be, just staying positive and kind of getting uh, the team to rally around you and just uh, being an example to them and a model. So that's probably the biggest piece of advice I would give. And um, uh, I think leadership is so important on a team. I've seen a lot of different teams, whether it was a player or whether it was as a coach and leadership has always been a key and um, just taking those younger players under your wing and you, you give back to the team, you know, and it's not just that season, but you know, that's going to carry on and that's going to be something that they remember about you. Um, so it's just uh so valuable. And that's, that's what I would encourage you to do is just really focus on that positive leadership. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's really, it's an honor to have my teammates select me, but I, I agree with the positive leadership thing. I think just like being one of the hardest workers out there and just like pushing everyone to be better. I'm not trying to like tell people what to do. I just want them to see what, like what we're doing as a team and just everyone like joins in. And it's really cool to see that that's like, we're all right. Like, that's what we're all like in for we're all just like working hard doing our best every day trying to get better right and I know obviously if you were selected a captain there's a reason you were selected a captain that you you earned it and your teammates look up to you and I know Shar thinks a lot about you because she expressed that earlier so that's awesome yeah it was great awesome. to meet well, you nice to meet you too well Jill thank you so much for joining us I know you know you're busy school day and everything and um it, it was really 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 gracious for you to pop in today for the first time we tried this and this has been wonderful and um thank you again for joining us and we'll let you go and get back to uh the students there at the high school thank you for having me absolutely thank you I must say I'm gonna say we are Penn State <laughs> bye Jill thank you all right, All right take Megan. Care. Yep. Megan, we've got a great season ahead of us and two big games this weekend. You know, we talked a little bit about the captainship and, the, you know, you've done this before. Um, this is a team with a lot of veterans. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? There are so many. There's, there's a lot of wisdom on this roster. People who've played as a group of fifth, fourth and fifth year players. What's the thought process like of making sure that everyone kind of has a voice in the in, at the table, a seat at the table? I think like the team culture we have is if anyone has anything to say, anyone's allowed to speak. We don't have like, you can't speak if you're a freshman or whatnot. So I think we have a really open culture as well. Like if you have something to say, like everyone wants to hear it. And when someone says something, then other people start chiming in. Um, I think it's really awesome too, is that like leaders on this team, whether like you're a captain or you're not, everyone just like leads by example and pushes each other to be better. So I think that's just like a really awesome like aspect of our team with the like the number of veteran players we have, but also just bringing the younger girls in and showing them that like you can lead with a voice and like by through actions as well, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, and that makes perfect sense, actually. That's kind of the best way to lead because it's example. Fifth year, what, what was it that made you say, okay, you know, I want to do this again? I could, I've, I've played four years. Um, have, did you get your degree? Are you wrapping a degree up, getting a second one? First, talk about academically, where are you this year? So I'm finishing up my um, bachelor's degree in biobehavioral health with a okay. minor in biology. So I'll graduate oh. in December. Oh, you're um, great. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but really, I just, with like COVID happening, um, I mean, honestly, the best thing that came out of COVID for me was being able to get another season here because yeah. my freshman year, I just felt like I was kind of like shell-shocked, um, got, got to play a bit, but it felt like kind of was not a waste, but I feel like I didn't reach my full potential yet for the team. So it's just awesome to come back to get another year, try and get for like more wins that big 10 championship for sure for the team national championship, hopefully. But yeah. um, yeah. And I just honestly, like scary going into the real world, but if I get another season, that's really what I'm excited about. Yeah. Well, you don't get many opportunities like this and to get an extra one. It's, it's, it's nice to be able to take it. So, but we're definitely happy you're back. No doubt about that. Let's talk about the weekend ahead. Um, I don't know if you saw, and I know, look, athletes, you all don't have to worry about rankings or anything like that because numbers are ephemeral. They mean little to nothing mm -hmm. until the results come in. But what the preseason rankings do tell us is you have two really excitingly competitive games ahead of you this weekend. What is the mindset of a veteran player like you heading into a home opening season where Virginia and Louisville are coming to town? Um, I think just there's a lot of excitement, obviously, opening the season at home um, Friday against UVA. I think just making sure the team, we compete at practice uh, today, tomorrow, Thursday, um, get ready to compete on Friday, but also just staying like in practice, focusing on the adjustments we need to make, like what we learned from this weekend, how we can grow and keep growing from the Syracuse scrimmage to the Villanova scrimmage and then taking it to UVA. Um, I also think just trying to keep everyone calm, collected while, while we're like preparing for this week. Um, but honestly, just getting ready to go out there and crush them. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, but. So two practices coming up and Tuesday, Wednesday are typically are harder days, correct? Yes, yep. So what, uh, you know, what's the plan? That, what will Tuesday practice as you get ready to head out of here in a few minutes? What is today's practice like for you guys? We'll probably go in with a little bit of possession. Um, so I'm 2v1s, 3v2s. I'm going to work into like big field stuff, um, 9v9, 11v11, just really opening up the field, seeing where the breakdowns are, just working on our press and outletting, um, working on possession, just like not making it a track, really focusing on how we can control the tempo, but also recognizing when we can go go fast to the cage. Um, yeah. Nice. And so just before I let you go, um, that will be today and tomorrow we'll mirror it a little bit. Thursday's always a lighter practice. I understand that. What, what is Thursday night, the, the, the night before a, a game like for a Penn State field hockey player? You know, what's the plan? Do, do you all get together? Do you, do you do some studying together? Is it just kind of get out and get fresh air off the field? What, what will Megan Reese do on Thursday night? Thursday night, probably grab some food with some teammates, um, make sure caught up with school, make sure assignments are done if I need to do anything. Um, I sit down, just really like visualize a little bit what's what it's going to look like on Friday um, and obviously get to bed early, get a good night's sleep. But really just getting myself in that mindset of having composure out on the field, getting ready to like just compete hard because it's going to be a tough game. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. This is a great idea. I like that we're going to try these this year. Um, you were the obvious choice to do the first one, and I'm glad we were able to get Jill on. So um, I'm going to let you go and get ready for practice. I want to thank you for joining us, and I'm excited to see you at the field on Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. See ya. Bye.